we actually already reserved the uh, Lucy Stern Community Center for our November sale this year. Um, oh. I think it's the 17th and the 18th. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm sorry. It's the third weekend. It's the weekend before Thanksgiving. I don't remember it's the next day. So um, go back home and check your calendar. And we usually open registration in July. So you want to make sure that you um, either watch out for the um, greenware, which in there will, uh, will include an insert of the application. So um, as a reminder, and or um, you know, pay attention to the glass or the announcement that we'll be making. <coughs> Usually the spaces fill up really fast, even though this year we have more space. Um, I don't want to turn anybody away um, and, or have people wait for two months to hear from me whether they can get in or not. So um, just kind of keep your eyes open. What community center? It's Lucy Stern community Oh, the one in Palo Alto. Right, yeah, the one in Palo Alto. And also actually, um, Site now as a community project is we're having another sale to sponsor the studio here um, in, in May, which is um, at this facility. So those are that sale is this May sale is only open to the people who use the studio, but um, if space become available, we also um, we will open up for to outside artists as well, which we did this past year in, in, in December, and we raised about six thousand uh, dollars for the studio so that was a really good um, good thing that we did um, you know, hoping to keep the program <coughs> continue yeah. so anything about sales that you have questions yeah. all right thank you uh, in out of eight and you uh, rotate around and then 90 minutes, 90 minutes, then I think there's a lunch and then there's 90 minutes, 90 minutes. So we have, uh, specifically I want to tell you what workshops we have. Uh, there's a hands-on sculpture, we're doing texture, uh, altering wheel and hand built items, um, we're doing a hands-on slab plates, throwing big, and we're doing mold making uh, so far, and under glaze and layer glaze techniques. So these are the ones that we have done so far. So we're trying to get a kind of a, you know, a variety of stuff. So April 21st, and only 100 people can sign up. Um, we're going to advertise it a little bit more widely to try to, um, you know, let uh, the uh, JCs know about it. To try and bring in, you know, students, and so just, you know, make sure if you want to go that you can sign up. Uh, we're at June 9th is a workshop. Uh, we haven't decided on the location yet, but we're having Bob and Sandy Kinsey come and do a full day workshop. Mm -hmm. They'll probably be bring some work to sell, and um, Mary Jane's working with Bob and Sandy, but um, Bob does a, uh, wonderful textures, he has great big stuff, and Sandy uh, uses those big slabs that are you know heavily textured and makes all her um, wonderful little hand built stuff. So it should be a really great workshop. Um, so for my presentations committee, we are set for March, and we're working on May, but July we'd like to do a picnic. So instead of coming and staying in this little room and stuff, we'd like to do an outside picnic. And so if anybody loves planning parties, um, come and talk to me because we'd like to do something a little different and, and really fun for the guild. So we need to figure out a location, and I need some extra help with this because I you know, we, we have two or three people that, you know, regularly work on this, but that's going to be an extra effort. So, I would love to have some of these, you know, this help. Um, potluck sign up. Right here. So, if you haven't signed up yet for potluck and it's your turn, come on and sign up. And then, um, I did this last time, I don't know, we passed them out. These are all the dates. So, since we're doing presentations, and these are the general meeting dates and the street committee dates. I, I did a little flyer. So if you guys want to put that in your calendar. There you go.
Art Center. If you've never been there, it's a fun little town to be in, and it's a great, the Art Center's really nice too, and the ACJ always has a really nice ceramic show. And so that'll have a, a mixture of functional pieces and sculptural pieces as well. Um, <clears throat> that will be sending you some information through BLAST uh, for signing up for that. Um, it's Right now it's looking maybe the third week in February. We'll be doing that. Peggy, I put out flyers for that. Okay, show okay, on great. The on the table. Great. Um, and then the, our big event is going to be the week after Clay Carnival. Uh, last weekend in April, we're going to go up to Davis for the Sikaka show. And this will be uh, in town. There will be, oh gosh, 50 or more venues where they have ceramic uh, art for us to look at. And um, this will be our first event that's that far away. So um, we're going to be looking for people who are willing to drive. People who are passengers will be helping to cover the cost uh, of the driving. But this will be a full day. We're going to we're going to go up early uh, in the day, and then we'll come back uh, later. So it would be the kind of thing you would probably need to clear uh, most of the day for. And again, we'll have sign-ups for that uh, opening up pretty quickly. Thank you. Sounds good. Okay, uh, board news. Uh, we have some exciting news. Um, we've had three board members for ever, it seems. Uh, and they finally uh, found someone who was willing to do it with them, uh, Cindy Cooley, who is our uh, Greenware editor. So, yay! That's really good news. So, now we have four board members. And um, we're looking uh, to see uh, Cindy bring in some really you know, good energy. That's good news. Okay, uh, member announcements. Um, I'd like to say uh, just a few things, and then uh, David has an announcement. Um, we had Sarah from the Sunnyvale uh, Community Services Organization. Um, again, she was hoping to make this meeting. I'm not sure if she's going to get back or not. Um, but this is an application if you want to enter any work in the miniature show. It's a donation um, to raise funds for the community services of um, Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale. Thank you. I couldn't so, see a date on there that you need to submit. Yeah, it's been extended. Um, they've extended it to the end of January. Um, mm -hmm. And specifically because they wanted ceramic art to be submitted and they've got 45 pieces of art uh, submitted, none of which is ceramic. So. Oh, mm -hmm. Come on, guys. Let's do it. <laughs> it's a good opportunity. <laughs> um, I also want to draw your attention to uh, an organization that we tend to forget about. Um, it's the Ceramic Emergency Relief Fund, mm -hmm. SURF. There's a basket back there uh, for donations, and jo Ann, Joan Lynn right, um, is the uh, organization <coughs> representative. Um, we live in an earthquake zone, <laughs> and you know about ceramics, <laughs> and you, you lose it all. So um, this is sort of a way to be a grasshopper, you know, and put, put money away for a rainy, a bad rainy day, um, and to help your fellow artists in other parts of the country. So it's a, it's a national organization. Um, they do really good work. It was started after Katrina. Um, to help artists who lost everything in that disaster. So if you have some change, want to write a check, have some folding money, uh, the basket is back there. Okay? Be a good uh, good creative citizen um, and help. Uh, I think that's it. Yes? I'd just like to add a couple of words about why I like supporting surf. Yes. Because artists are so vulnerable. I mean, Katrina, you not only lose your inventory, you lose your tools, you lose your home. It's kind of like disaster on steroids. So it's just really good to have some sort of safety net and God knows artists don't have much in the way of a safety net. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, David, would you like to say something about classes at John Baltimore? Sure. Um, uh, we have a number of workshops coming up at Blossom Hill Crafts and I just wanted to let you know about them. Uh, Elaine Pinkernell, I don't know if any of you are familiar with her work, but she's doing two workshops. Uh, one is basic uh, hand building, and then the other one is her wall art, and that's a two-day workshop. <laughs> Elaine is fantastic. Um, Paul Rubio is going to be doing a workshop on Raku. If anybody has interest in Raku, he's fantastic. And I'm going to be doing uh, a workshop on throwing large. 
Um, so I ask that you can at least center five pounds uh, when you come for that, and the goal is to double it, and we're going to also look at uh, stacking and coil and throw methods. So if you're interested, there are flyers up front, and we'd love to see you. Okay. Oh, good. We're, we're doing good time-wise. Um, two last things. Unless there's any other announcements from anyone out here? No? Okay. Uh, one, newsletter deadline, Greenware, February 10th. All right, so if you have anything. And we mean things like, you know, if you've done something interesting, you've gone to a show and you want to write a little report, we love that stuff. So, you know, um, think about contributing if you haven't in the past, right? Uh, the other thing is we are doing a planning meeting again. It's more actually sort of taking stock of where we are and how much we've accomplished and what we haven't accomplished from our goals from last year. Uh, but we welcome the membership's input. So if you are interested, uh, it will be February 6th. Um, I don't have the um, specifics right this instant, but I wish I should have put on paper, but I didn't. Um, but give me a call or call, talk to me after the meeting and I'll get your information and uh, get you connected. I think it's in the it's in the art room. It's yeah, this is building and seven o'clock. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh, that was easy. Why why didn't I think of that? <laughs>
like it's a sign for you know the, the, the city limits or something, then we identify who in that city we'd have to talk to about you know doing something on that sign. So that means that's what we mean by stakeholders. Um, the committee also decides on the nature and design of the artwork. We're going to determine a budget for the project. We're going to secure money and other resources, which may include a place to work, a place to leave the clay to dry. Um, we're going to plan the workflow and production. So if we have a large piece and we have six different teams working on different parts of it, we want to know who's going to be doing what, when it's going to get done, who's responsible for taking care of, making sure it dries thoroughly and it gets to whoever's going to fire it, and it gets fired and it gets glazed and on and on and on. Um, part of that, again, is assembling the teams and overseeing and coordinating their work. So we're going to identify teams, we're going to make sure that they know what they've got to do, and that they have the materials that they need to do it, and that they actually do it, and that we keep some control on quality because we want this to be a representative piece of art that we as artists are showing to the community. Um, they're going to create and maintain a work schedule and they're going to maintain ongoing communication with the board of directors, with all of you folks, our members, and the other stakeholders so that everything's clear, everyone knows what's happening, when it's happening, and there's some surprises. Oh, there's still going to be surprises. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So who decides what it looks like? The project committee. Here's why you want to be on the committee. The project committee will make the ultimate decision with lots of input from lots of people in an open decision process. So we don't know what that's going to look like yet, but it's going to be something like a jurying process. We're going to ask people, you, other artists, to come up with ideas. You know, we'll have a site in mind. We'll say, this is what it's got to look like. This is how big it's going to be. Give us your ideas. And it won't just be the artist's ideas. It'll also be ideas from the stakeholders. Because depending on where it's located, you may need to get the people who live in the condo complex to say, oh, I like this. Or the people who uh, use the community center near the wall where we're going to do our thing, that they feel comfortable with what we're representing on their wall. So it's input from a lot of different people. Okay? And, and it will be an open process. So who can participate? I have question marks on these because I don't know. I just decided I don't know. I mean, I don't. What do you want? Should it just be members, guild members in good standing, people who have paid their money? Should it be prospective guild members, you know, who have good clay skills or are willing and able to learn? They're in some of your classes and they want to do this project. Um, or could it be guests invited by a member? So you're, you teach a class and you have two people in your class you think would be really good on this project. You want to get them involved. Should we allow that? So I'm interested, what's your opinion? If this is an off-cag project, we can decide however we want to do it. What do you think? Yes? I think it depends on the project. If we're doing something at a school, then it would be nice to have students involved. <clears throat> if we're doing something, you know, it depends. I think we need to decide what we're doing before we decide who can participate. Okay. Does anybody have a strong feeling about whether that they should be limited strictly to members? You need hands to no, work. No. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I want to hear. You know, I don't want anyone to be kind of you know upset about hey, you know, this is our project. Yes. The other thing to think about is the one of the missions of our guild is uh, it's about education mm -hmm. and about education of ourselves as well as the community. And there's nothing better, I think, for uh, educating community to be working with community members on something like this. And they may never have worked with clay, but this might be an opportunity to expose them to something uh, like that if they're one of the stakeholders, for example. Right. Um, so I think it fits. If we, if we decide as a group to open it up to 
non-members, I think it fits with our mission. So I, I think it would be fine. Okay. To do that. Um, I have a question. Yes, uh, would you have to first run it by the city of Sunnyville if that's the location for this? Yes, it that's depends one on who the stakeholder is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you'll that's see awesome. later, there are some situations where we might have to, you know, contact the county board of transportation. Or, you know. mm -hmm. um, so yeah, then this is the whole process, I and mean, we will have to contact these people, we'll have to find out what their guidelines are, uh, cities have public art guidelines, all of that. So it's a, you know, it's a, it's an effort. We're going to, we're going to do it. We are. <laughs> this is a community art project. Um, it's a dimensional tile mural. This is just a detail of it uh, that was done by students at Addison School in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nina Kupke was the coordinator and manager of that project. Mm -hmm. Uh, I spent some time talking to Nina. <laughs> Please tell me everything you know. <laughs> and she did. <clears throat> well, not everything, but enough. So how much will it cost? We don't know. Um, you know, we don't know. Because we don't know what it is, you know. But I'm hoping that for this project we want to keep it in a, a reasonable scale because it's our first effort. So no more than 3000 The way I came up with that figure is professional installation, according to Nina Kepke, could cost about $1,500, again, depending on the size. So let's double it. Yeah. But this gives us a kind of a target for the scope, the scale of the project. So expenses would include clay, glaze, tools, materials, insurance, professional installation fees, hospitality, on and on, we might need storage in it. I don't know. You know, if you have a garage, I, I'm going to clean out my garage so I have a place. <laughs> and some of those your, things can be donated. Yes, and we might say, okay, you're a member of the community, of uh, the committee. Mm -hmm. You're a worker. Um, could you donate a pint of X Y Z glaze? Mm -hmm. Could you donate a 25 pound bag of this kind of clay? So I mean, we could do that. Um, we could ask the guild mm -hmm. to contribute a portion of the funds. Um, so there's lots of sources for the, the money, and I don't think it'll be difficult because this is not a lot of money, right? at least for our first project. Uh, source of funding, again, grants, donations, fundraising events, on and on. So we'll figure that out as we go. And this, again, is detail from another um, Kupke installation at uh, Ohlone School mm -hmm. in Palo Alto. Oops. Did I miss that? Mm -hmm. How long will this take? Well, you know, we're starting in January. Um, again, it depends on the scale of the project, but I'm thinking six to 12 months start to finish. So, you know, it could be something simple like a series of tile plaques, which would be like easy peasy, you know, no yeah. problem. Or it could be something like this, which if you were standing next to it, a person might be that high. So that gives you an idea. It's a pretty, it's the whole wall. And uh, I can't imagine moving kids to produce that. Uh, she, she did a good job. So uh, we don't know. But, you know, there'll be some time. Okay, so now we get down to the brass. So what can you do, you know, besides signing up? What can you do? Um, these are all images that I took just uh, recently. Well, not recently. I went. I had a vacation in Capital so. <laughs> Cruise ship. <laughs> but uh, these are. Uh, that's a painted mural. This is some trompe l'oeil in San Jose at a community center. Um, that's more of uh, Nina Kepke's work. Capital. Um, this is in San Jose. It's a big tour. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be time. Mm -hmm. It can be sculptural and 3D. And we'll talk a little bit about it. So what you can do, <laughs> keep an eye out for possible sites in your area. We're all over the place. I live in San Jose. Other people live in Sunnyvale. You know, I know you live everywhere. So look for these things, these blank canvases. This particular blank canvas I wouldn't do because it's hidden behind, you know, in the middle of the school. And that's not what I have in mind, you know. I, I really want this to be something that people can see. Uh, but there's all kinds of these things all over the place. So keep your eyes open. Think local. You know, walk down the street. You know, this is a parking, a little thing, you know, a retaining wall in a parking lot in downtown San Jose. And, you know, that might be an opportunity to put a clay mural, a tile mural on that. So think local. 
uh, think quirky. So this is more of that wall. It goes all the way down the block. And I was thinking, hello. It kind of <laughs> looks like a musical cliff, right? And what if you had the notes, right? And the words. Do you know? You know from, from here all the way up. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. So that think quirky. Think outside the box. So here we have the uh, Y, y on, Alme on the Alameda in San Jose. It's this big blocky building. And these are, this is kind of cinder block, right? And each of these <coughs> little holes, it's a hole. It's a, it's a hole. So think about designing a tile with a three-dimensional element. So a kid hanging out, you know, going like this, throwing a ball, whatever, hanging out of this little hole. And that hole's maybe eight by eight. So you could do one, you could do one, you could do one, you could do one. We could have 30 of these suckers in that, and it would look like the Y is alive with people. So wouldn't that be a wonderful project? And each of you could do your individual contribution. So think outside the box. Think big. You know, we kind of used to doing small things, so think in terms of a larger project, not this big. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Each of these panels, this is about 8 by 12 feet, and there are 11 of them on two sides. <laughs> and I drive down heading, and I look at this, and I go, oh, oh my God, could you see the history of San Jose? You know, could you see, you know, the riparian environment, and the, you know, whatever. You know, orchards. And, I mean, that's been done. But you know, you see what I'm saying. I mean, it doesn't have to be a small thing. And this could be something we do uh, 2012, 2013, 2014, you know, on and on until we're too old to, to care. <laughs> but think big. So don't limit yourself. Okay. So what else can you do? Keep our sea air fresh. This is a public art tile flat on the bridge in Capitolia. So these are probably done by you know paid artists who do that. But you know we could do something like that too. So. But what else you could do? Suggest where we might go for funding. Some of you are employed in corporate America, and some of those businesses have matching funds for employee projects. So they have money available, so usually through HR. And uh, they wait for their employees to come to them and say, oh, I've got this organization, they're doing a great project, I need $300. Right, the check. Or, oh, yeah, well, yeah, we could yeah, think big. Think big. Think big. Think big. Think big. Add a zero. Add a zero, right. <laughs> Exploit contacts you have with other organizations that could give grants. So if you belong to an organization that... Um, connects with another organization that provides grants for arts. We want to know about that and we want to be able to use your influence, the fact that you're a member, to, to be able to get in there and get a grant in there or just ask for the money. Okay, so that's something you do is provide that kind of contact. Uh, there was something else about that. Ah, an example is um, ceramic and Glass Arts Foundation. They give grants for projects like this. Um, there's a sheet here about how to apply for grants. There's a little brochure about CF. So if you're interested, you could apply for a grant for your own work if you want. But Nina Kepke is a member of this organization. And I went to her and I said, would you like to join the committee? Mm -hmm. She said, I'll give you as much time as I can. Well, you know, that was good. Um, she also said that her funding organization, this, this guy, uh, they fund underserved audiences, which is not quite what I'm thinking of, but it might be if we end up going to a school or some organization has a building and they serve underserved populations, then we could apply to them for money. So that's possible. The other thing you could do is join one of our subcommittees. I'm calling them clay cadres. <laughs> cadres. Yeah. Uh, responsible for creating, firing, blazing, installing, 
and for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because, you know, this is a social thing. It's not just learning. It's not just doing together. It's also enjoying it, you know. We're artists. We should have fun. People expect us to pray party. <laughs> not, not that we do that because no. we're you know, conservative, really. But, but we do need someone to help us with that. Mm -hmm. Teach us how. <laughs> you, know, you know, help us with um, buying the refreshments mm -hmm. and setting it up and, you know, being hospitality. Because look how nice it is to come into this meeting and have a spread like that. Mm -hmm. So if we could do that for maybe, you know, our first firing. You know, and after the inst an after installation party, you know, that kind of stuff. That would be great. So we need people to plan that. So these are the kinds of things that you would be doing as a member of the committee. All right. Can I ask a question? Oh, oh. Uh, I, yes. I, I really don't know the answer to this. As an organization, are we based in Sunnyvale? Are we supported by Sunnyvale? What, no. what is our connection? We, we, we have no geographical are we, are limitation. Are we incorporated in, in a or, particular state? No. 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 We're here. No. We're we're state, state, state of California. State. We're so it's state, so it's mm -hmm. anywhere. We have people all We are not beholden to anyone or have to follow anyone's mm -hmm. particular rules other than the state of California. Yeah. Are you 501c3? Yes. Yes. Yes, we are. Okay, so what's the next step? All right. The first committee meeting is two weeks from tonight. <clears throat> Location to be determined. Probably at my house, but... <laughs> Maybe not. Um, so if you're interested, please sign up. Okay? I'm going to put it right here over the pen. And I encourage you to sign up for this. And you may not get called right away, especially if you're signing up to be on a committee because, you know, it's going to take a subcommittee. It's going to take the committee a little time to get things rolling. But we will call you. All right? Any other questions about this project? Well, most of your committee meetings be in the evening. Yes, I'm going to try to do that. Because uh, on this sign-up sheet, I ask people to say when they can meet, and the majority is in the evenings. I mean, I would love to do it during the day. You know, 1 o'clock, 1.30, that would be great. But not everyone can do it, and I want to be sure. Hmm? A little wine. <laughs> <laughs> At 1 o'clock. It's a party right here. Yeah, party right here. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Do you have, a, like, a sense of... The commitment, the number of hours. Uh, you know, that really a tough one? it is because it depends on what you volunteer to do. Okay. Are we starting smallish? So yes, we well, that's why $3,000 was the upper limit. Okay. I want, oh, good point. When you're out in the community looking at things and going, oh, you know, thinking outside the box, think four by eight. <laughs> so, four feet by eight feet, how many square feet is that? <laughs> <laughs> 32 square feet, thank you. Um, so 32 square, is that right? 32? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 32 square feet in any configuration, okay? So I think that that's about right. How many? That's big. Well, you know, well, but there's a lot of us. It's going to be a big group. Okay. You know, we split it in three pieces, you know, whatever. It's a sheet of plywood. It's a sheet of plywood. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. A sheet of plywood. So keep that in your mind. Um, and next year, man, we're going to go for it. You know, we'll do huge. But this year, we're going to go small. So, think about it. Um, please join us if you're interested. I welcome everybody. Everybody will put you to work. Okay? We really will. And this will be a lot of fun. So, thank you very much. Well, I would imagine some of the subcommittees could be here in the day time. Yes. Pardon? Oh, yeah. Repeat. Yeah, once we get the subcommittees identified, you guys can go and choose your, your meeting times. You know, it fits what you can do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Flexible, flexible, flexible. The of the uh, professional installation, hmm. uh, because of insurance issues, we're going to have hire a company to do it. Um, Peter Mercado, I think his name is, does uh, has a ceramic business in San Jose. He's done things like what well, he did uh, Nina Kepke's installations. He also did uh, work at the Mexican Heritage mm -hmm. Plaza. Um, so we make sure that it, when it's up, it gets up there and it stays up there. And we don't have to worry about it. And he does things like add really nice borders and you know, metal stripping and things like that. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you.
So I, I wanted to talk a little bit about some thoughts that, that our, our workshops and presentations could be was thinking about last year to support empty bowls and to fit into this community idea as well. And so um, to support empty bowls, it, it's a perfect project for, for a guild. And I know that Joyce has always been at the meetings and has been talking about empty bowls and you know soliciting donations and she's there's there's her Oh that's very it's not pretty. mine. Daryl uh, donated a bag full. She she brought the bag of uh, soup bowls, one of which is this one. It's beautiful. Yes. And um, um, I'll add after Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thought was Kind of trying to converge the energy of the guild no matter where you work and I our idea with our committee was to talk to the different major studios <coughs> and try to come up with sort of a general time frame so that no matter where you were people were working on creating their stuff in February and firing their stuff in March if that works I mean, you know, uh, everything has to get to Joyce, she has plenty of time to price, and it can dribble in as well. Or it's best or in, if actually. it comes in yeah. uh, not all at once uh, March 29th, because uh, we are a small committee. Welcome more people to help. And generally, the cleanup of the work or pricing is done at my house, because at the moment, that's the only site I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have uh, four to six people helping, but I'd welcome many, many more, and um, so after the meeting, if you want to help more in any way, just see me, give me your name and address, uh, phone number and email address, and we would welcome extra help. Um, do you know that the event itself is April 22nd at the Seventh Day Adventist Church, um, which it's been at forever and ever, and um, the other thing I want to emphasize is we not only need soup bowls, but we need other things because the same, many of the same people attend the event. And how many soup bowls can you want? So if they know we have tables full of beautiful pottery work that is priced and sold, uh, it's, uh, they come in droves to buy the other items. And so just keep your mind open. It doesn't have to be a soup bowl. It can be a beautiful other piece or many, many other pieces. So you're looking for all sorts of clay donations. Uh, correct. So our thought was just as a community project that if, um, if we're thinking and if we're getting the cooperation more, I guess be more officially or more formally with all the studio folks. We've talked to Dan, Mary Jane's working with Black Bean. Uh, actually, everybody I, on my group is not here tonight. Um, uh, Janine is working with uh, Blossom Hill to talk to, to Joanne and who else is left? There's the Sunny Hill. Uh, Barbara Rose has just been working with Danny. And what we are just trying to do is um, make it more top of mind in February to be participating in this project and to get them fired and back to, to Joyce. Uh, one idea that we had with our committee was creating like a little stamp that you dip in underglaze before you fire your bowl if you want to and it says made by a member of OPK. So if we get that done and get them to the different the four different studios, we can have that available if you want to add that to your bowl. Because it'd be nice to have an off K mm -hmm. signature on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And if anyone <laughs> who's working in their own studio wants to borrow that, then it's perfectly possible. So um, anyway, we're just trying to kind of converge the energy into this. So um, Joyce has her uh, piece, you know, her flyers out. Yeah. And I don't know if there's anything. So, so, we're, so I was suggesting that on the 20th, if you have of March, is our next general meeting. And if you haven't brought your stuff to Joyce or to Sunnyvale, I think that's where they're dropping. Right in the hallway here, there's yeah. uh, to the studio, there's a place. Or my phone number is on that flyer. Yeah. Call me. You can deliver to my house. It's in Cupertino. And Dan, I think, is collecting it in, a, you know, in bins at Fire Fire. Maybe there's other studios are. I'm not sure. 
So, but the 20th of March would be ideal because here we are. So if you want to bring your stuff that day, then we can do that. So, And all I'll say is if you can deliver them sooner, sooner. please do because we can't handle 500 pieces of March 20th. Right. So it's ongoing. Right. So that's, that's for the different sites, you should have the, um, you know, and people want you kind of yeah. a poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Suzanne <laughs> and I are working on a poster, but the thought was maybe we should coordinate more with, with the postcard graphic as well. So I'll, I'll talk to you and we can uh, run the postcards. Yeah, right. If you so. want, I've got the, um, the logo that's in the common design and the packing. Yeah, we'd like to not confuse better. people. Yeah. No. You know, we'd like it to be from from us. <laughs> so that if it's up in the That's idea was to put up a larger colored poster to remind people in the different studios. I mean, your postcards are coming as well. We actually did that in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have the sources and the f uh, money for it. So I really welcome your addition, right. and uh, I, I'm sure Sue would help. Uh, yeah, and if we're, if we're talking to each studio owner, maybe it'll, you know, and if we start doing it, you know, more, whatever the word is. <laughs> well, you have many more people Powerfully. to yeah. uh, join in yeah. with the efforts in the studios, and that's a, a source of uh, yeah. not being done as well. Yeah, so we're going to do that this year. So thank you for making a Facebook time. Page too. Yeah, we can put it up on the mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's it for, for that. Okay, all right. Hold it bold. It has an added rim, one is plain. These are both cone tan. Um, I work with tar paper templates when I'm hand building primarily. I brought extra templates, newspaper, scissors, and pens so you all can cut a template out and take it home and build some hand built bowls. So this is B mix with broad cone 10 pick B mix. I do not like um, canvas texture, so I've smoothed off all the canvas texture. And then I'm going to cut around here. You have a choice if you're using texture, these are highly textured, is to texture first and then cut. Or if you want it to be more precision, you might cut first and then texture with a smaller texture tool within the pattern. So I have a nice big texture. I'm just going to go ahead and roll it across here. I don't usually texture the back side of these bowls because they, the, way, the shape, you don't really see it too much. Okay. So I'm going to cut, just cut around it nice and straight, and I'm going to cut right around the whole circle first. And then I'm going to cut these out. There are two ways to do this. These cuts, I usually cut them straight to begin with. And if you put your thumb right here at the end, it makes the clay not poke out past where, the, where you're pulling the knife. This little board I'm working on is really cool. I always work on these. And it warped, so now it spins. It's <laughs> been yes, really handy. So the choice is you can either leave this on here and bevel cut or like this at a 45 on each section in the, on the same side each time. <coughs> or you can roll. I actually like the look better with rolled. So what I'm going to do, let's start over here. I'm going to roll this and thin it. And I'm going to roll the same side each time. 
uh, pony roller. I'm rolling with the small end. It's really hard to do it this way. <laughs> if you don't own a pony roller and you want to get into hand building, it's a must have. Okay, I rolled all four. Now I'm going to roll the same side of the back. Rolling over the one you rolled before? No. Nope. Oh. Uh, yeah, turned it over. It made up. Not the same it's side. the opposite side. Oh, I see. Side. But the way to remember, oh, which side well, did I do? I can't easy. remember. Is always roll the same one when you turn it. Whichever way you turn it, you're always rolling the same one. Got it. Then when you put it together, it's the two sides that come together properly. This is called a ball stylus. Now I'm going to put my name on here while I remember, and it's facing me, the back side. And another thing I like to do is to make my work look lighter. <laughs> and that is I like to thin the top rim. <coughs> this clay is a little bit wet. I should have left it uncovered. Manage. Okay. Uh, hopefully, this will stand up on its own, but since it's a little bit wet, I think I will on here just in case if I need it it'll be there because you can use the template to hold it up when your clay is soft it's also a good chance to make sure that this didn't stretch too much since I first cut it it's a little bit bigger sometimes I recut to get it right back to the same shape same size it was but tonight I'm not going to do that Okay, in here is vinegar and water, five to one. Five parts water, one part vinegar. So I'm going to overlap about a half inch. So you need the vinegar water on one back side and one front side, the rolled edges. And the trick to doing these is to start at the point here. That's what you want to overlap first. What do you mean? When you said the point, is not the this outside point, point, right here. Okay, the inside point. The inside point. If you start at the top and work down, a lot of times you end up with a little hole mm -hmm. down here at this point. So if you start there instead, you can make sure you have that sealed. So why do you use the vinegar? I put it on the wrong side. Okay. What's the purpose of vinegar water? Vinegar water mean? chemically reacts with the clay and makes it sticky. Mm -hmm. This way. Is that not too much? Cool. Clay is really wet too. Yeah. I don't generally score these because you can reach all the way down and get it really well connected without scoring. And the scoring lines, if you don't do them perfect, they show. Yeah. And I don't like that. Jill, this is the same way you attach your mugs? Your, your, your mugs? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. The box bottom mug is the same technique, good. which is something you needed to learn. So <laughs> yeah. it's really good for you to see it, too. Okay. Can you so put too much vinegar water in there? Yeah. Okay. So I try not to have it drool down okay. because it softens whatever it touches. And the fact that I got on the wrong side on one of them, I'm just going to let it dry. So if your clay is too wet and it won't hold its shape, you can pull this up and using blue tape on each section, big, mm -hmm. nice big piece, you can 
hold it there that way. This is holding its shape okay, being that it's B-mix, it's okay. If you're using a, a wetter clay, would be a good example. Um, T2 is very wet, and uh, silver, uh, some of the clay planet ones are really wet. So if you don't let your slab dry a little while, you're going to have to support it when you do this. Otherwise, it'll just start falling apart as you're making it. So just come in and get these closed up. Are those for the glass? Are the boards? points, not so pointy. I like tapping <laughs> rather than smoothing them. It kind of, it's sort of like paddling it so it closes it up nicely. And then seal these so they look nice. So the object of doing this tonight is to, for people who don't work on the wheel, they're going, well, what can I do for empty bowls? Mm. How long has it taken me to nice. make this? Mm -hmm. uh, it it nice takes you less time to make this yeah. like this than it does on the wheel, mm -hmm. unless you do no foot throwing where you don't mm -hmm. have to trim. Mm -hmm. So this, you can make a bunch of these, sit down and, you know, make six of them in a pretty short time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's sort of round. You can make it square, which I kind of like the look of the square one. It'll hold the shape better when the, it dries a little bit. Can you use a dryer to? Yeah, I do. Use a heat gun if I'm seriously trying to make it square. <coughs> Just finishing up the rim a little bit. Okay. How long did that take me? How do you keep track of the time? Okay. Help yourself to copy the templates.